Welcome back to the Macro Golf YouTube channel. So today we're talking about swing speed training for golf. And now we're moving into the off season, we're gonna to start to see loads of people go out and buy speed sticks or start speed training or trying to increase their distance. So if everyone's doing a video just to cover some key concepts. And all I'm gonna to cover today is some science around what it is and how it works and how you can do it. And then I'm also gonna show you some drills that you can do that we believe here at Macro Golf to be the safest and most efficient. And then thirdly, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about some practical considerations and how to actually implement this into the golf course. So when we talk about swing speed training, we're removing the idea of actually improving our body in the gym, for example. So things like strength training, power training, all these things. What that's gonna do is increase your body's potential to create speed. So we can increase our power, we can increase our strength. And from that, we can then start to express that in a golf swing and start to create more speed. But putting that aside, when we're talking specifically about swing speed training, what we're now talking about is increasing our body's potential that it currently has and actually being able to express that into the golf club. So here it's about actually taking power and expressing it as club head speed. And one of the ways that we do that is with speed trading, over speed trading, by swinging something quickly time and time and time again and pushing ourselves to create more speed, more speed, more speed and training our body to produce more and more speed time and time again. This is where products like speed sticks, things like radars like this are gonna come really helpful because they're gonna give us the opportunity to forget about consequence and simply just swing something faster and faster and faster and try and get the number as high as we possibly can. So removing all practical considerations that I'll cover later on whether this is gonna be a good idea and how it's gonna affect your golf in good ways or bad ways. What we're really doing here is we're increasing our body's ceiling. So let's say for example, your current 100% swing speed, so you swing as hard as you possibly can, let's say it's 100 miles per hour. What we're trying to do now is we're trying to say, well actually before my maximum was 100 miles per hour and now my maximum is 110 miles per hour and I've gained 10 mile an hour of maximum club. And that's essentially what we can do with speed training. That's the type of result that we see through speed sticks. That's when the result that you see people that have increased their speed by 10, 15, 20 miles per hour. Essentially what we've done is we've created a situation where our bodies learn how to express this speed into the club head. But just a note on that, we all have our little buffer zone. So we're all gonna have a safety zone of how fast we should be able to swing. And most people don't get very close to that number, but with the speed training, we're gonna get closer to that number of what is gonna be safe for us to swing at. And that number is set by many other metrics like strength, power, stability, mobility, genetics. And what speed training is doing is get us closer to that line. We do also have a little buffer line, which I'll cover later in the practical consideration part. But what we're trying to do is just get closer and closer to this season. What strength and power training does for us, so now think everything in the gym, is it allows us to increase that ceiling slowly, slowly, slowly. So the result of that is obviously a lot slower. The results you're gonna get from your strength training, from your power training are not gonna be as obvious and as fast as you're, what you're gonna get from speed training. But what that does do is it increases your potential in the future to swing faster. So if you're interested in that, I'll stick a little video up here somewhere in front of my face that's gonna allow you to start to learn a little bit more about strength training and power training. But back to speed training. So what this speed training is gonna do is gonna help us get closer to this number. And actually it's really fast for us to get this result. And especially if we do the right drills, the right ways and the right frequencies, it can be pretty quick, the result we can get from this. And what I've done is I've put together a PDF of what we would deem a pretty good speed training plan. So if you just click the link below or up here somewhere, I'll stick it. You can download this free PDF where we're gonna take you through a full speed training plan. So now just to consider the practical implications of speed training. And I'm specifically talking about speed training and not adding speed because there's many other ways we could add speed through technique, through trying to swing it harder, through getting stronger by building power. But specifically with speed training, there's definitely some implications that we need to be aware of. So the first thing is, sorry to be boring, but it's, it's a bit dangerous. As I said before, we've all got our buffer of how fast we should be able to swing it based on our mobility, stability, and strength. And what we're trying to do here is we're basically trying to just nudge this further by not really getting any stronger or more mobile. We're kind of just trying to push past this barrier. And generally what will happen is we'll get to some good progress and we'll keep trying to push, keep trying to push, and something will break down. And the amount of players that have come to me and said, I've tried to do speed training and I had this issue, or I tried to do this and my back started to hurt, or I tried to do this and then this issue came. It's because we're trying to push our body beyond what it's currently capable able of doing. And generally when we do that, when we reach any type of buffer and we try and push it, generally something will break at some time. So it's definitely a consideration to make that if we're not getting more mobile and we definitely currently have restrictions, or if we're not getting stronger and we currently have weaknesses, or we're not very stable and we're trying to do this, 
generally something will go wrong and that's going to end up with you probably coming seeing someone like me to fix the problem another thing to consider is that when we're constantly trying to push this barrier so when we've got a speed radar in front of us we're going to do whatever we possibly can to get that number to go higher and typically what will happen is we'll start to go through a process of moving a little bit better so maybe you'll start to rotate a little bit better maybe you'll start to express a little bit more release but then what will happen is you'll start to move poorer. You'll start to sway off the ball, you'll start to lift up. And although these moves are really good for trying to increase more speed, so if we look at some of the longest hitters in the world, they'll be doing some of these things. For most of us and for most golfers, they're probably gonna make you worse. And, but you will hit that occasional shot where you time everything and everything goes well and you'll hit it a lot further. But when we take the average driving distance and quality of drive, simply by putting all these moves in place yes the occasional one would be better but on average we will be worse and when we think about golf performance and trying to improve the scoring average week on week we really need to be keeping the ball in play and hitting the ball in play with the clean shots of the green very regularly so everything we need to do needs to be based around the fact that we need a clear shot to the green yes it's going to be more beneficial to be 5 10 15 20 yards closer to the green but we have to still have a clear shot to the green. And that is always worth considering whenever you start to try to do some overspeed training and we really start to put in some of these aspects that are basically increasing our chances of making poor contact or hitting the ball offline or out of bounds. And just another consideration to make is that any speed training you do and any effect it makes to your swing speed, that is obviously gonna have an effect all the way through the bag as well. So we just need to consider things like distance control, uh, wedge distances, approach shots into the greens. All of these things are gonna be a little bit up in the air. And also when you have done a lot of speed training, and this comes from experience, I was talking to a lot of my friends who have done a lot of speed training, distance control and finesse wedges does become a little bit trickier uh, because you've just lost that finesse and touch of manipulating speed when everything is at full max. So just take that into consideration before you go and execute on a speed training plan. So in summary, we really recommend that you start to improve all of these areas in terms of strength, mobility, and stability first. I'll stick some links somewhere of where you can get some help on that, when we can guide you on that. But if you are gonna execute a speed training plan, we really recommend you stick to kind of these safer movements that are a little bit more related to your current golf swing without drifting too far away. But we do also recommend that you start to push yourself and you can train hard on this stuff and get a pretty good result. So things like putting a radar in front of you and pushing yourself is gonna be a really good way of doing it. What I like to do is I like to take my current driver swing, not vary away from that current driver swing at all, but try and make that driver swing as fast as possible. So if I start to do anything weird like moving off of it or lifting up, that rep wouldn't count. And the only reps that are gonna count are gonna be the ones that are good driver swings in my opinion. So here's some tips for you, whether you take my advice on this or not, I don't mind, but honestly guys, all I can do is recommend that you take this with caution. If you're going to wait and execute it, you will get a good result, but just be aware that the overall purpose of all of this is to shoot lower golf scores.